Welcome again to the NPTEL course Scanning Technology and Value Addition of Seafood. So uh, we will be dealing about canning procedure for various seafood products. In the previous class we have discussed about the canning of different fish that is fin fish and in this class we will be discussing about the canning of shellfishes. So first let us look what is a shrimp canning. In the shrimp canning uh, we go for penis indicus, penis monodon and Lithopenius venami. So these are the commercially important shrimp species and this is how it is marketed. So this is the protocol for canning of shrimp. First we receive the raw material. In the case of shrimps need to be fresh and it should be brought or pre-processed immediately after catch. So that is very important in the case of shrimp. And then after material has been received it need to be washed. So any adhering slime, blood, mud or anything unwanted materials it need to be removed and then weighed and beheading. So in this we remove the shell, head and other unwanted parts of the body. And uh, shrimp it has an exoskeleton, skeleton is on the outside of the body so that need to be removed. After heading and peeling it is uh, deveining, deveining is the process where we remove the gut content. So it is on the dorsal part, if you make a slight cut and you can remove the vein. And then it is washed, weighed and it is subjected to blanching. Blanching it helps in inhibiting the enzymatic activity because uh, if the enzymatic activity continues it will, it will cause deposition of melanin and it may cause black spots. So that is removed by dipping or by treating the shrimp by blanching the material 0.1% citric acid. So this helps in inhibiting or arresting the enzymatic activity which will prevent the melanosis. And after that the blanched shrimps they are dried, they are graded. If they are different sized then the, according to the size they are sorted and graded. So it can be done manually or mechanically. Then weighed and it is packed and it usually the prawns are packed in SR lacquered cans. This is sulfur resistant cans because uh, the amino acids, sulfur containing amino acids they may react with the can and it may cause rusting or production of gas H2S. So to prevent that SR lacquered cans are used. Filling liquid is added, it is generally 2% brine. We can also add usually the pure salt is used for brining and we can also add oil. Then it is seamed, washed, the can is washed, any adhering oils on the surface or any adhering materials on the surface of the can it also need to be removed by washing then it is retorted. Retorting temperature is 115 that is 115 degrees centigrade for 20 to 25 minutes. This again depends upon the type of can that is being used. After retorting it is cooled immediately and then dried. For cooling we use potable water or chlorinated water that is 1 ppm chlorine and after drying it is labeled and stored. So in the canning process we need to be careful because it has an exoskeleton unlike the fin fish the skeleton is located on the surface of the body so it need to be removed and that process is called peeling. After peeling the veins are removed so it is called deveining and during this process the organs are also gastrointestinal tract, reproductive organs and hepatopancreas are also removed. And after deveining sometimes smaller prawns deveining is not required, it is not mandatory. But for larger sized prawns or shrimps, deveining is required and because it contains microbes, the gut con may contain microbes so that need to be removed. Also after deveining it is blanched and blanching is done for many reasons. One of the reasons which we have discussed earlier was to arrest the micro uh, enzymatic activity. The other reason is to help in salt absorption, also to develop the pink color. So when we are subjecting the shrimp to the blanching or slight heating, it develops the pink color which gives a good texture and appearance to the product. It also improves the flavor and again blanching reduces the moisture content. So these are the additional advantages of doing blanching. So after blanching the shrimps are packed in desired cans. Liquid media can be oil or brine and after packing we go for exhausting, seaming and retorting which we had seen earlier. The problems associated with canned shrimp is retort burn is usually seen in dry packs where we don't have liquid media. The level of liquid media is below the uh, level of the product. So if the product is exposed it may develop burns on the surface that uh, during retorting. Again sulphide blackening it is because of the sulphur containing amino acids like methionine or cysteine 
it reacts with the can content that is tannous and forms sulfate which gives a black color to the content. So that is again a disadvantage or a problem which is associated with the shrimp canning. Now this is the specifications uh, for canned uh, shrimp in brine and it was laid in 1968. Accordingly the level of heavy metals are given. Again arsenic it is 1 ppm, lead 5 ppm, copper 10 ppm, zinc 50 ppm and tin to 50 ppm. And uh, we need to maintain the headspace of 0.5 to 0.75 centimeter and drain weight should be 64 uh, percentage. A sodium chloride should be like 3.5 percent weight per volume basis. These specifications need to be taken care of while we do the canning of shrimps. And uh, now coming to the canning of crabs, these are the different species that are canned. Charybdis, Potunis, we have Potunis. Sanguino lentus, we also have Potinus pelagicus. So, th these are the other species that are used for canning. And crab can they can be canned or they can also be sold as pasteurized product. Now, this is the protocol for crab canning. Raw materials are received, they are washed, and again in the crabs, we need to uh, get the fresh live crabs. The dead crabs or the weak crabs they need to be avoided or discarded. And after washing the dirts, everything need to be removed. They need to be weighed and dressed. During dressing, the back shell is removed. Viscera and gills are also removed. After that, again, it is subjected to washing and it is subjected to blanching. And followed by blanching, it is cooling, meat picking. So here you have to understand that the meat is collected after cooking the product. In the other previous cases, it is after cooking, there is no nothing directly going to the canning process or it is filled into inside the can. But in case of crab, uh, to remove the meat, it has to be done after cooking. So after meat picking, again, it is washed or treated with weak acetic acid and then it is packed into the container. And we can add liquid media or we can also add masala. We can also add oil or rice. And uh, after uh, retorting, it is subjected to cooling, drying, labeling and storage. So these parts are again similar to the procedures we had seen earlier. So in the canning of crab, we have to be careful. Only live crabs are used for canning. And for meat separation, it is subjected to heat. And only after that, it, uh, we are separating the meat. Crab need to be cooked or it need to be heated to separate the meat. And again, uh, crabs, they can be canned into two different forms, that is single face pack and double face pack. In the single face pack, the body meat is packed into the can and uh, on the top of it, we find the claws. And in the double face pack, the claw meat is packed on both on the top and the bottom. And along with that, we add brine and citric acid. And the problems that are associated with crab meat are blackening or uh, black discoloration. And this can be averted by adding a lining of parchment paper in the can. And we also find retort burn. This is generally seen when the amount of the media is lesser. It is pasteurized or it is a dry pack. And blue discoloration also is there. When it, the bleeding of crab is not done thoroughly, then it will cause blue discoloration. This can be avoided by adding a chelating agent which will chelate the metal. Usually we go for EDTA or citric acid. So they will trap the, they are metal chelators, they will trap the metals and it, the metal will not be available for the further reactions. So these are the standards for trap meat in brine and uh, the vacuum can should be 150 millimeter. Sodium chloride in brine should be 2%. And uh, citric acid, which is used for maintaining the acidity, it is 0.2%, that is weight per volume basis. Bacteria requirement, it should satisfy the test, that is clostridium content should be nil and TPC should be according to the limits. And acid insoluble ash, it should be 2% by mass. Now, according to the FSSI, these are the different products that can be marketed, that claw meat. And we also have black fin, premium lump, special under each you can find the description for example claw meat it is crab meat from claws it is mainly only the claw meat that is taken and it's an economical grade and it is usually used for soups and dips and according to the FSSI the minimum lethality temperature should be 85 degrees centigrade for 31 minutes the standard has been put by FSSI 
and these are other types of cans for crab and here it is according to the grades so 55 75 the, it indicates that there will be uh, 55 to 75 lumps in one can in 30 40 it indicates 30 to 40 lumps so in 90 120 jumpo lump means 90 to 130 pieces or lumps in the can so again the ccps will be receiving and uh, then followed by metal detection and seaming pasteurizing or canning and then chilling and chill storage so these are the different ccps so identify the ccps very important problem associated with the crab is the presence of antibiotics so the residual content need to be checked and it should be within the limits again if it is not within the limits it should be informed the supplier need to be informed and uh, necessary actions need to be taken and again metal detector it's a physical hazard so any metal pieces that need to be trapped by the using a metal detector and uh, then seaming need to be confirmed because it again it causes recontamination of the product then pasteurizing temperature this is a time temperature relationship that also need to be maintained properly then chilling and chill storage that is if it is a pasteurized product then these two are also important so these ccps we need to be checked and necessary actions need to be taken accordingly now next we have to see muscle canning the muscles are clamps or the meat of bivalves are used for canning and uh, we can go for the muscles can be green muscles or brown muscles we also have marcia resins and uh, the procedure includes raw material collection washing depuration depuration is a unique step which is included only for the muscles during this process the muscles they accumulate the toxins in the body when the muscles are collected from the environment they have to be subjected to depuration and in this they are treated or they are kept in the running water for 24 hours uh, which helps in removing the sand dirt and other materials from the body and after depuration it is the shell is opened by boiling it in the uh, water for 10 to 15 minutes and it is called shucking and meat is removed it is if it is a large size then the gut content need to be removed or else the smaller ones we can be used as such and after that it is graded if there is a size variation is there then it need to be graded it is blanched in the 5% salt solution for 5 minutes then it is mixed packed the muscles can be packed with oil it can also be packed with masala and then it is exhausted seam and washing again retorting cooling drying labeling and storing so uh, the points we need to remember are we have to take only live shells uh, and depuration need to be included in the canning of bivalves and uh, when we do the cooking in case of large clams they are cooked by laying in a single layer and when subjecting it to heating or cooking the liquor comes out and it is collected in the shell so that is called clam nectar and it can be added to the can itself to maintain the flavor or it can be marketed as a separate product so it can be marketed as a clam nectar actually it adds to the flavor of the product so and the uh, process of removing the shell is called shucking so after removing the shells the clams are subjected to canning as we, we had discussed earlier so this is the these are the standards muscles in oil and uh, it was laid in 1983 according to it uh, arsenic content should be 1 ppm uh, that is the maximum limit then lead it should be below 5 ppm copper below 10 ppm zinc 50 10 to 50 mercury 0.5 and here we add mercury because again it's a heavy metal it comes from the industrial deposits or the waste which goes into the water so that's why mercury also need to be tested for the shelled animals and uh, so in this uh, session we had seen the canning of fin fish and canning of shellfish the protocols are mostly same for both the cases that is fin fish and shellfish in the fin fish we had seen canning of tuna sardine mackerel these are the commercially important fishes and uh, sardine it has uh, scales descaling is very important again nobing is an important part in the canning of fin fish where we remove the head and the gut region so that is a very important step you will not find in the crustacean uh, canning or canning of shrimps or crabs or mussels and after canning they are subjected to brining which helps in removing the soluble proteins 
and if the soluble proteins are not removed it will adhere to the surface of the can again it will cause the spoilage so that is again another step which is not found in crustaceans and again the skin is very thick in case of tuna that need to be removed and it is removed only after baking which is not there in other fish and not even it is not there in the crustaceans also so these are some of the points which make fish different from shrimp and in the case of shrimp we usually go for marine shrimp for canning and the deveining is very important because it removes the gut content and if it is a smaller crustacean we, we can use it as such but for larger crustacean it is very important to devein the product and it need to be fresh in case of fish we can go for frozen samples also frozen products that can be thawed and used for canning but in case of shrimps it need to be fresh and it need to be processed immediately and crabs need to be live if it is mussels then it need to be depurated these are the different points that need to be noted in case of shrimps or in case of shell exoskeleton or the crustaceans again the crustaceans they are subjected to blanching because it inhibits or it arrests enzymatic activity because again if it is not arrested it will cause a blackening or it, the color will develop on the material so that need to be avoided so again that is done only in the case of shrimp in case of bivalves we had seen that depuration is done which removes the contents the anything that has been deposited in the body of the clam it will be removed uh, during depuration it is a very important step again for mussels but we don't see this step in case of other products that is in case of fin fish or other crustaceans and also the clam nectar it is a very important byproduct which is obtained only in the case of clams and this clam nectar we can use as such in the cans or we can market it separately it adds to the flavor can get achieve the clam flavor in the nectar so that is again important point that need to be remembered now these are the processes the canning process it's a processing step which is done after pre-processing and pre-processing again it's a very important criteria and a lot of steps are involved in this so pre-processing is the preparatory step where we prepare the product for further processing and these we will be discussing in the coming sessions let's wind up for today thank you